How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. Today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about planting tomatoes. Um, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Daryl Stokes, and I will leave a link at the end of this uh, video for Daryl's video where he made a raised bed. And uh, he did an awesome job on this raised bed. So, you know, there's people out there that really don't have room to plow like a garden or maybe say they don't own the property and their landlord says, no, you're not putting a garden in. I don't want my ground tilled up or I don't want you putting a raised bed in. Well, we don't have to stop from planting just because of that. You could use five gallon buckets. Five gallon buckets are great to plant your uh, plants in and you could move them. And if you was renting the place and you wanted to move, you could always take your plant with you or you could take your bucket at least with the dirt and everything uh, already there and you could take it to your next house, which is pretty cool. I mean, they're a bit heavy once they're filled with dirt and especially what I'm gonna do with mine, it's gonna be really heavy, but I will be able to move it around. Uh, say we're going to get frost, I'll be able to move this plant inside if I don't have anything to cover it up with. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages to the five gallon bucket planting, but there's a lot of disadvantages too. You can really only put one plant in there. So, But if you're in an urban area, area and you don't have any place to plant, uh, the five gallon bucket is the way to go. So. Let me show you what I've got to work with here and what I'm going to do with my five gallon bucket. Okay, I just have just a plain old five gallon bucket and you can pick these up at Lowe's or wherever and I'll probably leave a link on the Amazon for five gallon buckets uh, just so uh, you have something to go to if you want to order something from Amazon. So the five gallon bucket is actually a good thing to plant in. It's got a handle. Oh, uh, Everything you need is already here. Uh, in my video, in my plant, I'm going to be using an old scrap piece of steel. Uh, just an old scrap piece of steel. Uh, we got one tomato plant. And I do have garden soil over there. I'll show you that later when we get ready to fill up the bucket. And I have a roof bolt. Now, this plate in the roof bolt is actually for a stake for the tomato. You don't have to do this part. Uh, it's just me and I always like to put my little twist on things and uh, this is my twist I'm gonna be using the roof bolt and if those of you who don't know what a roof bolt is uh, these were used in the coal mines and uh, it's a big long bolt and it was used to put up through the roof to hold the ceiling of a mine up and they would put bunches and bunch of these in there and uh, I never worked in the coal mines, but I knew people that did work in the coal mines years ago and they used to bring these things home and use them for tomato steaks and they do make great tomato steaks. So we're going to be cutting the head off of this one and welding it to this plate and putting it in the bottom of that bucket. So my, my steak is going to be there forever. I mean, it's, as long as I got dirt in there, it's going to hold it down in there in place for me. <clears throat> now. You could do the same thing with a wooden stake. Uh, I do believe that you can go to Lowe's and you can buy tomato steaks and they could be wooden. And if you wanted to do the same thing that I'm doing here with a plate, just get you a piece of wood and screw it to the bottom of it. But it's not necessary. It's definitely not necessary to do the step that I'm going to do. I just want it because I want it. So let's get to uh, getting this project started. All right, in our first step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill some holes in the bottom of this for drainage, because we don't want our tomato uh, container to fill clean full of water and just soak in the plant, because then it'll rot. So we're gonna drill some holes anywhere you want. Okay, now that we got a few in the bottom, I'm not going to stop right there because I'm going to need some, I'm going to put some on the sides too because if this seals up from laying on the ground, then guess what? I'm going to fill my bucket up. So I'm going to turn it over to the side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to drill holes all the way around the outside of it.
Now, one more thing about the uh, bucket. We got all the holes drilled in there, and whatever you have, whatever type of bucket, this bucket had oil in it. So I made sure that I washed it out real good with Dawn dish liquid and cleaned it up real good so that oil is still not in there. So whatever kind of bucket you use, whether no matter what it is, you should really clean them out really good before you plant your tomato plant in there. So now I got all my holes drilled in here and I just did kind of stagger them up and down on the bottom here. So any water that gets in the bottom of this bucket should be able to drain out and that's what we want. We don't want our plants setting in water. Okay, now we're going to get started on our steak and I'm just going to cut the head off of this because I don't need that head on there and we're going to weld this part to that plate that I showed you. So we'll get this cut off first. All right, we're going to trim down the stake um, to about five and a half feet. Okay, we cleaned up the ends here, and we're going to go ahead and get our stake welded to our plate. And I made some nice little gussets here that I can put on the sides of this to keep it good and straight. All right, we got our little gussets on there. We got our pole on there. I think this is gonna work out pretty good. It don't have to be perfect. It's gonna be buried in the dirt anyhow. And like I said, this is not something you have to do. I'm only doing this because I need to add my little twist to the video, and this is it. Add a plate to the bottom of it. Who knows, they might even sell these things in at Lowe's. I don't know. I never looked at them. I just got some old scrap metal and came up with this to put in the bottom of my bucket. So, like I said, you could use a wooden pole. You don't even have to put a plate on the bottom of it if you don't want. Just put the pole down in the dirt. That's fine. All right, we're going to go ahead. We got our bucket ready. We got all the holes in it. We got our stake ready here to go. And we're going to set that down in there. And now, at this point, we want to make sure that the water drains out of the bucket. So, I went out in the driveway. Got me some nice little stones, and these are like 57, stuff that would go in your driveway. I'm going to pour it in the bottom here. We just want it to be just above the holes that we drilled in the bottom. So now we got our gravel down in there. That's going to give us some good drainage. That's going to be really good drainage. So when this bucket gets a lot of rain in it, it's not going to stay in it. Now at this point you probably need some landscaper film or something like that. I don't have any, but I do have an old piece of a bed sheet. And I'm going to lay it down in there. It's just a piece of camouflage bed sheet and I cut a hole in the center of it. I'm going to lay it up on there because I know water will go through this. The landscaper film would be really good to do, use. So now that's going to keep all the fine dirt from washing down into our gravel and plugging up all the holes in the bottom of the bucket. Okay, the only thing I'm going to use now in this bucket is I got some, it's Miracle Grow garden uh, soil, but uh, you don't have to use this. Uh, whatever you prefer, whatever you think's best is fine with me. But you just got to get dirt in there, or otherwise, you don't have anything to plant your plant in. So we're going to go ahead and start filling our bucket full of this nice looking dirt 
Then we'll be ready for our plant. That's some good black dirt right there, I'll tell you that. I don't know how many uh, buckets you could fill with this one bag, but I'll bet you probably two to at least two, maybe even three buckets you could fill. Now this is probably going to settle a little bit down in there. Once you put your plant in there, rain starts getting on it, it's probably going to settle down a little bit. You might have to add a little bit more to top it off. I think you could do two good buckets. If you did them about the same way I did mine, I think you could do two good buckets. That's what I would say. You could have two tomato plants, and that's the best way to plant these. If you wanted them, you, you would probably want to do two at a time. That way they have, you know, the pollinate each other. Alright, the last thing that we're going to need for this bucket is a tomato. And this you're going to have to pick yourself. Just take your, whatever tomato you like the best, that's what you're going to plant in here. So we're going to go ahead and plant this tomato in here. And uh, we're about ready for it to start growing. Alright, for our next step, planting the plant in here. You want to take your handle and stick it up like this because when you carry this bucket you're probably going to put your fingers around it, that little pole a little bit but you don't want your plant between this handle and that bar because this would be where you'd pick it up so we're going to put our plant over off to the side just a little bit so we'll go ahead and get our hole dug down in here now we're probably going to have to add dirt to this later. This dirt's pretty soft. I really didn't want to pack it too much. I'd rather let it do it on its own. And uh, we can add to it if we need more dirt. And you're going to want to add more dirt anyhow because you're going to want to hoe up around your plant a little bit. And that helps it grow when you hoe up around it. So we're going to get ready to put our plant in there and what I'm going to do with mine is we're going to pull it out of there and I'm going to take the first few of these leaves and we're going to nip them guys right off of there because we don't need all these in there. And the more we nip off the leaf part and plant it the more we'll have underground to gather roots to feed the plant. And some people would use a scissor, a pair of scissors do this. I just use a razor blade. Now as you can see, we eliminated all that up there. Now what I'll do is I'll take my little, well, Julie's little claw thing here. We're going to loosen up all these roots that are gathering around the bottom here. I'm just gonna loosen them up. You could probably just do this with your hand. I'm just gonna loosen them up a little bit so they'll be able to go out and feed. There's a lot of roots that was gathering up on the bottom of that small container. So we're gonna plant this thing as deep down in there as we can, right up to them bottom leaves, like right in here. And then eventually, we'll be cutting these leaves off too. Later down the road, we'll be cutting them off. Now, I'm going to give them a drink of water. Uh, I really like using rainwater. If I can't, if I don't have, you know, rainwater, uh, tap water is just fine. But the rainwater seems like it's better for them, seems better. So I'm just going to put a bottle of water down in here. And that's going to let that plant have plenty of water for a while. And we're going to go ahead and push our dirt up around this plant. 
and see how good this guy goes. Now, this plant will grow, and as it grows, we'll be tying it to this uh, piece of bar as it grows up through there. So now, our handle is over on this side, and our plant is over here. Not in the way of that handle, but as it grows, we will be tying it up this bar. All right, this is the type of tomato that is. It's a Parker's Whopper uh, Improved Hybrid Tomato. I don't know much about uh, this type of tomato because I've never grown it before. But pickings are a little bit slim out there for us, and uh, I grabbed it. And we'll see how it grows. And a good thing to do is to put that... Uh, in the ground in that um, pot and then at the end of the year when you see how well this tomato does you'll know whether you want to buy that tomato again or if it grew good for you but we're gonna see how it does one more thing uh, I don't know if you guys know it or not but the tomato plant uh, the leaf and stuff is actually poisonous so if you're out there pruning them you gotta watch the grandkids around the tomato plants uh, they're they're not really cool, but the fruit's good. The tomato's good, but the plant, the the stem or the leaf itself is actually poisonous. All right, what we've done, we've went ahead and moved this plant outside, uh, so we can get some rain and everything. But I don't know about you guys, but in my area in southwestern PA, uh, it's May eighth today, and it's actually pretty cool. And they're calling for 20s tonight. So what's nice about having your tomato in a bucket is if it's going to get real cold, I could either take them inside or I can move them to an area where there's no frost, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then if it's in a bucket and say you're not, you don't think you're getting enough sunlight, you could always move your tomato to a spot where there is more sunlight. And that works out nice too. Uh, so there's a few things there. There's a few uh, advantages to having them in a five gallon bucket and there's nothing wrong with that. Me and Julie used to cut grass for people. We had a lawn care business for 20 years and uh, a lot of the uh, elderly would plant them in five gallon buckets. And to be honest with you, I think they had better looking tomatoes than I did. So for right now, we're going to throw a few in buckets and give them a try and see how they turn out. I think they're going to do just fine. We did some tomatoes and raised beds before. I did a video a little while back on pruning, suckering and pruning your tomatoes. And uh, the tomatoes did good. That wasn't a good year for tomatoes, but they did pretty good. So if you want, I'll leave a link up there at the top uh, for the tomato video where I did the pruning. And I will leave a link for Daryl Stokes' uh, raised bed. I think you guys are going to like that. He made that video and it took off. It's flying like crazy. It's an awesome video and it's definitely getting a lot of views. So it's got to be an interesting video. I think he has a series on the, the raised bed. So it's something for you guys if you're interested in this. You may be just interested in the raised bed too. So that being said, uh, don't forget... Uh, I'll leave a link at, for Amazon in the description. You don't have to buy what I put down there. Just use that link and it helps support my channel. Some qualifying purchases, I'll get a small commission off of it. And I do appreciate the support of uh, you guys using the Amazon for me. So uh, I would like to tell everybody thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Till next time.